What If, featuring Astonishing X-Men. I don't know what... Oh, it's from 2009, 2010, probably. Uh, this is a different type of J. Scott Campbell cover. The first time I saw this was probably a couple of months before I was actually able to buy it. I saw it at a sale. Someone had it in their hand. And when I saw it, he told me, the guy told me about it. And you know that meme of Jared Leto looking in amazement at the fashion show, at the coat, going just like, wow, like that's exactly how I was towards this book here. Uh, what if featuring Astonishing X-Men, J. Scott Campbell cover, a very different kind of J. Scott Campbell cover, a more, I guess you can say a more painterly finish to his art. It looks a lot more rendered, a lot more three-dimensional, you know, a lot, yeah, just it, what, what else do I want to say about this? But just a really cool cover um, before I trip all over my words, but just a really, really different kind of Campbell cover and the book really I'm gonna say it doesn't it's not an expensive book you know the most there's about there's about six or seven uh ten dollar or less eBay listings for this so it's not super expensive but it to me it's it was really hard to find out in the wild because I spent about two months looking for it and in the two months of stores that I went to the book wasn't there and I just kind of happened across this uh, one store and I found it for cover price so uh, not expensive but tough to find in a really 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 cool uh, J. Scott Campbell cover all right what else what else hey now by the way I just really had to just jump right into it because uh, a lot of these books here I've been staring at for the past two months. I was gonna break this these books up into two videos, but I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of looking at them, so we just gotta go. We gotta go tough. You dig? All right. What is this? Brave and the Bold, uh, number Brave and the Bold, Volume Two, Number Thirty Three, featuring Wonder Woman, Zatanna, and Batgirl. Now this is a prelude to the events of the Killing Joke. Zaytana wakes up one night and has like this really horrible vision that something bad is going to happen to Barbara Gordon, but she's not she's not sure what's going to happen. She's not sure when it's going to happen. So she rounds up Wonder Woman and uh, they along with Barbara Gordon and they kind of just have a fun night out on the town. That's that's basically pretty much what happens in the story, and uh, towards the end, towards the end of the story, that's when we get into her uh, being shot by the Joker. So I I thought it was a really 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 good story, um, very very touching, very heartfelt. So in this book here, I uh, found this for cover price. Found it at the same store that I picked this up at. Um, again. I, this is a relatively tough book to find. I I guess you could say relatively pricey, about a about a twenty dollar book on eBay. Um, it probably averages about fifteen dollars. Um, if you go to a store and they know what this book is, nine times out of ten they'll slap like a twenty dollar price tag on it. But I ain't paying twenty for it. And I believe this is probably my third copy of this. So I was I've been fortunate enough to find uh, either cover price or below copies of this. So yeah, all right. What else? What is this? What is this? Okay, this is X Force Necrotia. I don't know. I haven't really read the story. I know I just kind of came across this variant. This is a variant for this. I came across this variant. Uh, I think I paid like five dollars for it. The the price on this kind of fluctuates a lot. Sometimes it'll go for thirty. Sometimes it'll go for ten. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it'll go for five. The price just kind of the the price wobbles. So if you can find a cheap copy, you know, like maybe eight dollars or less or something like that, and go for it. Hell, ten dollars or less, go for it. So yeah, all right. It's a cool, you know, Lost Boys. Lost Boys cover, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, 
we're moving along. Um, now these next set of books here, I've had these for a while, but I just don't think I've uh, shown these off. I I searched the annals of my videos to see if I've shown these off or not, and I don't think I have. So if I have, uh, excuse me. But uh, I bought these about a year ago. This is Lady Killer number one from Dark Horse. Uh, this is the first series of this of Lady Killer. Um, I re I really, really dig this title. This is an awesome title. Um, I haven't read uh, the second volume yet, but this first volume is just terrific. Uh, the art on it is spectacular, especially... Uh, for the subject matter, you know what I mean? Because it's not, you know, you're not dealing with superheroes or anything like that. It's basically just regular people, you know what I'm saying? And this is the type of series that is basically screaming to be turned into a TV show or turned into you know, a movie or something like that. This is a great, just a great, um, a great comic. Um, now, what I thought this book was was about like a female serial killer, but it's not. It's she's more of a uh, paid assassin, pretty much, and she works for an agency, and she's uh, posing as a housewife. And it's set in the either the late fifties or early sixties. But uh, I've picked these up about a year ago when they first came out. Um, right now, this book is going for, I know this book has gone for as high as 50. It ain't going for that right now. I'd say it's going for about 30 to $20 um, after auction. So yeah, okay. I just figured this is, to me, this is a kitchen sink kind of a haul. I'm just throwing everything in it. I'm throwing everything at and in this haul. And there's also a variant for Lady Killer number one. This is the Emerald City Comic Con variant. I'm not quite sure what the ratio is to this, but I believe this is the only variant for uh, the first series uh, for Lady Killer. So, yeah. and here are the uh, second and third issues of this. And pick these up too. I bought this. I bought this book about a year ago too. And I just, for some reason, it's, it's just been sitting in my basement, kind of gathering dust, and I never brought it upstairs <laughs> to show. So here we go. Um, another book that I've had for a very long time, uh, Cable Deadpool number 50. For some reason, I, I searched for this book because I knew I had this book, and about a year ago, it was this book had kind of start it started to climb up in price to about a twenty dollar book and i made it my mission to find it it took me about two months to try to find this book because it was buried underneath so many other comics so when i found it a year ago i don't know for some reason i don't think i showed this one either so but i'm showing it now because there is renewed interest in this book, due to it being the first appearance of uh, Cable slash... No, I'm sorry. Deadpool slash Venom. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't... And this book is, like, what? Now, uh, like, maybe a $50, $60 book. I, for some reason, I just don't think this book is going to hold the... It's, it's going to hold its price. You know what I'm saying? I think this... I think this book will probably even out at a $20 easy book. You know what I'm saying? Like it won't be, to me, it won't be like a dollar book, but it won't be, you know what I'm saying? Like a $50 book. It'll probably be like maybe 20 or something like that if you see it at a shop um, in the long run. But if if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. So, but I have it. I bought this like right when it came out damn near 10 years ago. But I don't know. I had it. It's cool to have books that you found, but uh, that you bought a long time ago that are now getting hot that you kind of forgot about. So, all right, we're moving along. These are were kind of like local pickups and stuff that I've had for a while. And this here, I picked these books up, these next few books up. Uh, about a week ago, I went, I drove about three and a half hours to a convention. It was kind of like, it was like one of those three-day conventions, so 
uh, it was something, something a little bit bigger. And like I said, drove three and a half hours. You'll see what I picked up. Okay, uh, before I actually went to the show, uh, I had some time, so I stopped at a couple of stores beforehand. Picked up uh, Uncanny X-Men, number 529. This is a... Um, what's the ratio on this? 1 in 25 or 1 in 50? Uh, this is the Vampire variant. These, The Vampire variants ran across, uh, I think, the Mutant titles. Cause I don't rem yeah, I think like the X like the Wolverine, you know, X23, X I think X Force maybe. But they ran across certain Marvel titles and I don't know, they're they're very cool, very different looking. Uh I would happen to find this for five bucks. So and I about a couple of weeks prior, I found the I found this same book for fifteen, but I just wasn't comfortable paying that much. But five, definitely. I know the last one, two, three, the last three auctions for this book have ended at about $30. So at the at the present point in time, this is around a $30 book. Of course, it could go up in price or it could go down in price. It's anybody's game, but the point is to find your books cheap enough to where if the bottom you know, if it, if a book bottoms out, then you haven't taken a loss. You haven't either taken a loss or taken a huge loss. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, five bucks is good. And I found this for five dollars as well at the same store. Captain Marvel number four. This is, uh, I forgot. This is the variant, the, the uh, Terry Dotson variant. Remember however many videos back when I showed this and I paid $15 for a copy? Well, of course I'm going to find uh, another one cheaper. So, But I'm happy I still have that $15 copy. I mean, the book goes for about, I don't know, maybe 20 or something like that. So, I don't know. I'm cool. I'm cool with that. And this is probably a VF copy anyway. So, yeah. All right, we are moving along. Went to another store before the convention, and I found a very cool uh, Spawn number one. This is a newsstand variant. I swear, these newsstand variants for Spawn number one are pretty... Are, are they hot? Are they hot? I don't know. There's, I guess you could say so. I guess you could say so. Just because it's something... It's something a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember for a while, like a copy of Spawn number one, these were like 50 cent books. You know what I'm saying? Now, a, reg a copy of Spawn will probably be like $10 or more at a store or something like that. And a newsstand variant is something a little bit different. So, I don't know. And I found this for, I think I found this for like five, either five or four dollars. Um, online, this book will go for around 20 to 30 So, yeah. Yeah. And at the same store, I was looking for this book. I noticed this book has become a little bit hot lately. This is the question number 17. Now, the significance of this is that this is the... I'm going to put this in quotation marks. The first appearance the, in DC continuity of Rorschach. But... The, how this story goes is that the question, he, um, in his alter ego, he boards a plane, but before he gets on the plane, he buys a copy of of Watchmen, the, uh, the graphic novel, and he falls asleep while reading it, and he sees Rorschach in a dream. That's what this is, that's what basically this is. So to say it's his first appearance in the DC universe, I don't know, that feels a little disingenuous to me. But this book is hot. It's around, I wanna say around a 30 to $20 book. At this point, really tough to find, like super tough to find. I was really surprised to have found this. So um, I, I think this was like the day after I put this on my want list, I was able to find it. So, and since then, I really haven't been able to find it at any other stores. So, yeah. And I found this for, I think, like a couple of dollars, probably around cover price. So, and this thing was kind of buried, you know. So, I guess that's how I was able to find it a little bit easier. So, yeah. Yeah. The question number 17. It's a hot book. So, if you can find it cheap, then grab it okay now these are the books that i actually 
uh, picked up at the convention. Uh, the Crow number one. Now, I found this for $30. Now, do not get it twisted. It, although it is a first print, the condition on it is a little off. That's why it was so cheap. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of spine ticks. It, this is not black activist worthy. Uh, a lot of spine ticks. Uh, there's a huge flap crease on the back cover. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of like a lot of dents, a lot of little tiny dents on the back cover as well. So this is probably, I would say maybe a, a VG plus to find minus copy. Um, it's still pretty presentable, especially in this video, but especially how it looks on the screen. But uh, yeah, yeah, picked up for 30 bucks. So that's all I can say about it. Uh, what is this? The Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, number 32. Uh, this is my second copy of this. Uh, first appearance of The Daughters of the Dragon. I guess you could say this is a relatively tough book to find. I uh, found this for $9. It's probably in probably outright fine condition. And I figured it was worth it at $9. Uh, what else? Uh, Wolverine's number one. I'm surprised this book doesn't go for more than what it does. Wolverine's number one, uh, the one in 25, Gabrielle Del Otto variant. I found this for $3, so basically less than cover price. Uh, found this for $3, Wolverine number 66. Although I sold all of all of my old man Logan books, including the uh, Michael Turner variant. I don't know. I just couldn't pass that up. So I got that for 3 bucks. Richard Dragon Kung Fu Fighter number one. Found that for $3. And when I left the convention, I still had some time, so I went to another store and I found Harley Quinn number five, the Mad Magazine variant. A lot those Mad Magazine variants kind of sucked. Uh, like uh, the vast majority of there, there were a couple that were really good, but the vast majority of them were like really, really bad disappointments. But this was one that um, that was I think this was probably one of the better. Um, better variants. I found this for 10 bucks. I don't know. The book goes for 20 to 30. Now I drove three and a half hours and I picked up these books. Now were these books worth driving three and a half hours and paying what? $25 admission to the convention and all that and all the gas and the mileage. No, outright. No, but at the same time, I had the urge to go, and if you, I had the urge to go to the convention and hit up some stores in the area. So, if you have kind of that itch to scratch, um, th there's really nothing you can do except for go. You know what I'm saying? And, and at least I know, as opposed to just kind of wondering. So, um, you know, meh, 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 meh. okay. Now that same night. I came back home and went to another convention, a little bit more local, about an hour away from me. And <laughs> the only thing that I found at this convention, or it, it was a smaller show, but the only thing I found at this show was DC Comics Presents number 26, uh, probably a VG minus copy for $10. And the funny thing was, I knew these guys, so it's like I could, probably could have just went to their shop and picked it up. So was this worth driving an hour and paying $10 admission for? No. But again, if you have the urge to, you have the, if you have the itch to go search for comics, then you just gotta, you just gotta go. And that's, and to be honest with you, that's how it is 50% of the, honestly, probably more than 50% of the time with me. You know, it, a lot of the times it's just busts. You know, it's not gold mines all the time. It really ain't. It just, it ain't like that. But if you gotta, if you have to go, then you gotta go. Um, but although this was, although these kind of, these conventions were a bust, especially this one, uh, about 15 minutes away from the convention, uh, there was a shop that I I just didn't know anything about that I went to, and I picked up not one, not two, but I picked up 
three copies of Invincible Iron Man number seven, and I got all three of these for cover price. So I guess you can say that was worth it. That was kind of worth driving an hour for. So yeah. And at the same store, I picked up what else did I pick up? I found Vision number four, uh, Vision number five, and Vision number six. And here's a book that I've had for a couple of months already, Vision number seven. I figured I'd throw that in there because I don't think I've ever shown that off either. And it's weird because I think this one is probably one of the harder to find issues. I don't want to say probably around a, maybe around a $10 book, 10 to $15 book at this point. And, and it's pretty... And that's pretty impressive for something that's not for for a non variant. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Okay, found these. What else? I guess I'll show you some more local stuff. Uh, what is this? This is Justice League of America number fifty two. A friend of mine told me about this book. Uh, he's like, "Yeah, hey, we're gonna go find it. It's a cool Supergirl cover." So. Yeah, found it. Uh, paid five dollars for it. I noticed online that this book is going for around twenty. So you have the cool combination of Batty Man and Supergirl. So yeah, got it for five bucks. Okay, what else? <laughs> okay, now this store I drove. I, I was there this week. I drove about an hour and a half. Again. I don't know, just because, like, usually when stores, like, a convention is kind of disappointing to me, I still have that urge, I still have that need to try to find more books. So I drove about an hour and a half. I drove a lot these past couple of weeks, like, a lot, a lot, like, a lot, a lot. Was it really worth all the driving? Uh, eh, but like I said, if you gotta go, then, if you feel the need to go, then you gotta go. But, uh... What is this? Um, I found X-Men number 11. Now, this is the Silver Pressman variant. This is, book is really, really tough to find. I got this for five bucks. Um, I don't know. This book online goes for about 20. So, man, yeah, found it for five. <laughs> uh, what else? I found two copies of Invincible Iron Man number nine. Yeah. So, and it's... Funny, these books, uh, first, I th guess you could say cameo appearance. No, first full appearance of Riri, Riri Williams. Uh, these books really don't go for that much, but if you combine them with uh, number seven, uh, these books will go for, like the set will probably go for a little over 20 bucks. So that's why I picked up uh, two of those. And I found, finally found this, uh, Brickleberry number one, the uh, sketch variant. I know this book for a while was going for 20. I was not trying to pay 20 for this. I found it for six bucks and I'm like, okay, I'll, do, I'll definitely do six, but I definitely wasn't paying 20. Uh, another local pickup, uh, New Mutants number 25. This is a, I forget what ratio variant this is, but it's a variant, uh, Arthur Adams variant. Found it for eight bucks. I, that was the only thing I found when I was at uh, my local store. So I'm just like, eh, I'll, I'll buy it. I don't know, man. I, it was, it, I, I knew this would happen when I got back in town that my local store, like a lot of my local stores would just be really, really, really dry. Like, really dry like parched like just say like you'll find nothing but sand that's how dry my local stores are right now I, and i knew this would happen uh venom number two i uh, found this for cover price i mean it's around like a 20 to 30 dollar book so i'm like okay i'll pick it up all right now we are oh in this uh venom number 40 eh no big deal Okay, what else am I going to show off here? Now, these books I've had for a, for a while, probably the past couple of months, so it feels good to be able to show these. Uh, two copies, I found two copies of Uncanny and Humans, number 11, first appearance of Mosaic. I've been searching, I'd, I had been searching for these ever since they had come out. Paid $30 a piece for them, not the greatest deal in the world, I'm, I'm and I'm still not quite sure why I bought two, but... I don't know. <laughs> I found I found them for 30, which I thought was 
a decent enough price. So, yeah, and I don't know. The price really fluctuates on this, too. Sometimes they go for 100 Sometimes they'll go for... I don't know. Sometimes they'll go for 30. It's weird. It's the price on these are really weird. The price says on these are really weird. So, um another uh online purchase, the Vision number 1. Uh this is the 1 in 20 variant. I'm really annoyed that I bought this one baby because this was before I had actually found this. The uh 1 in 25 variant from a few from however many videos back now if i had bought now if i had found that uh the sook variant before i had found this one online then i probably wouldn't have bought this but i paid 26 dollars including the cost of shipping i mean I, and again this book kind of fluctuates in price uh sometimes it'll go for 50 sometimes it'll only go for 20 so it, it's like you gotta catch a seller at the right time to be able to unload this at a decent at a decent price you know what i'm saying so i'll just hold on to it for a while see what happens um and i was at a convention about two either two or three months ago and i found this and i got caught up in the hype it happens to the best of us i paid 15 dollars for this and i'm really annoyed that i paid 15 because i came across all those other copies for cover price and i just feel like an asshole for paying 15 for this but if you get sometimes you just you just get caught up in the hype and that's what happened to me so yep that's what happened that's what happened but I try. I you you try not to let it. You, you know, some every once in a blue moon, uh, these these things happen. You know, like, and I'm and I know I could probably get at least get what I paid for this, no problem. And I could probably get what I paid for that. But I don't know. I just don't even feel like letting them go right now because it just. I don't know. I just don't feel like breaking even. You know what I'm saying. But it happens to the best of us. Okay, we got to move on. Uh, Voltron number one. I had been searching for this book for the longest time. Ever since uh, that Netflix series came out, uh, a couple, uh, however many months ago, um, I had been searching for the uh, first comic book appearance of Voltron. So I found it for $3. I remember coming across a copy, but the guy wanted 12 at the time and I'm like I ain't paying 12 so I'm I was happy to have found this for three bucks I uh, found this for three dollars as well flash number seven the uh, Darwin Cook variant again this is another book that really fluctuates in price uh, sometimes it'll go for 20 sometimes it'll only go for five it's just, prices are weird on this one as well but again if you try to find if you find it cheap enough no problems Okay, here we go with some older books, finally. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, number 28. Uh, first appearance of the Molten Man. I paid $80 for this. I don't know if we can get close up on this. This is probably... I want to say, if this was graded, it's a good chance this might come back at a... Maybe... Can you see me in the reflection? I'm waving. But this is a good chance this might come back at a 5.5. Five. And I paid 80 for this. I, th I think the main reason why I actually bought it was because I because I sold a book to be able to pay for this. So it really, you know, it really didn't cost me hardly. It, co it, co it cost me hardly anything. So very minimal spine creases or hardly noticeable spine creases. So um, this... For a book this age, I guess you can say it's black activist worthy. I don't want to put the full I don't want to put the full stamp on it, but it's it's almost there. It's almost black activist worthy. And the back is very you know what? Screw it. You know, no, no, no. We we're running out of time. But the back, just take it, just take my word for it. The back is very, very clean. It's a very clean book, and the pages are very nice as well. Uh, another really super cool book to have. Oh, I'm very happy to have this book. 
uh, Dr. Solar, Men of the Atom. This is uh, number one. Uh, this is the gold key from gold key number one. Um, oh my gosh. I've been searching for this book like up and down. I paid, how much did I pay for this? Uh, I think I got this for 60 bucks. I would put, probably put this at a fine. If it got graded, it might come back at a six, which I'm more than happy with, uh, especially for what I paid for it. Um, I don't know. Is it just me or is this book severely, severely, severely undervalued? Like really undervalued. Um, this book predates The Amazing Spider-Man by what? Actually, no, it doesn't. I take that back. It does not predate The Amazing Spider-Man. It's around the same time. And when you think of especially Silver Age characters, the first, like when you think of first appearances of characters that have come and gone, like the molt like the Molten Man, first appearance of the Molten Man, you know, is worth a little worth a little something. But a book like this isn't when you think of the first appearance of the haunted tank who gives a damn about the haunted tank when you think about what what other what other first appearance is worth something but the character is kind of blah you know what I'm saying I I can't think of anything off the top of anything else off the top of my head but you get what I'm saying and this right here is just like such a terrific character especially when Valiant got their hands on the character Ugh. <laughs> so because this is basically based as a valiant fan i i'm so happy to have this book so yeah first appearance of dr solar yeah okay we're get we got to move along because the video is taking enough time uh ba -ba -ba, found this actually you i take this back okay now these were from a convention that i went to um probably two months ago uh, Jungle Action number six, uh, first appearance of Eric Killmonger. Is this Killmonger? Yeah, it's Killmonger. Now, I actually had probably a near mint minus VF plus copy that I sold off for about a hundred dollars right as the news of uh, more of the uh, Black Panther movie news came out. And I ain't looking back. And just because like having the first appearance of a villain, especially a Marvel Studios villain, ugh, ugh, the, I definitely ain't trying to hold on to those. You know, I learned my lesson with the first appearance of the Silver Samurai. Like I paid like less than $10 for like probably one, two, three, but probably like four near mint copies. So it's not a loss. But I held on to them at the time when they were going for like two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I ain't, I ain't gonna sell them. I ain't gonna sell them. And then the Wolverine movie came and gone, and now they're back to being like what twenty dollar books at the most. So I don't know. I just I had to sell that near mint copy. So, but I have a VF, uh, not a VF. This is probably a VG. Probably a VG, VG minus copy. No, I would say a very good copy. This is a very good copy. So I'm happy with this one. And uh, what else did I find at this convention from two to three months ago? The Flash number 138. Got that for three bucks. First appearance of the Black Flash. This was a hot book a few months ago. Uh, Flash number 30. First appearance of the new Wally West, I guess you could say. I guess, yeah. it, but at whatever case, whatever the case is, it's a really tough book to find. Uh, also found this uh, Superman Wonder Woman Treasury. Got this for twelve dollars. Yeah. Okay, so these are the books that I picked up at the convention from however many months ago. I don't remember. Uh, okay, now this is from another show from probably two months ago as well. A zombie Tramp, number one. This is a the risque variant. I, I don't know. Like, there are like a thousand volumes of Zombie Tramp. You know, there are like a thousand different Zombie Tramp number ones. Uh, I think this is from the second series. This is, again, this is the risque variant. I paid $10 for it. It can go for $70. Um, I don't know. 
I thought it was a def decent enough deal, so because I really don't know that much about Zombie Tramp, but I thought this was a good enough of a deal to not pass up. Okay, now here's another, I guess, Amazing Spider-Man book, and a variant that, I don't know, for some reason, I think doesn't go for as much as it should. Or it goes... It doesn't go for as much as it should. Yeah, that was right. Amazing Spider-Man, number 612. This is the Ed McGinnis variant. Cool black cat cover. I don't know. I pay... How much did I pay for this? I think I paid $10 for it. I thought it was worth it. This book probably might go for 15 Might on a really good day. But I don't know. For some reason, this book should go for way more than it does. Uh, what else? We got to move along. Guardians of the Galaxy. This is volume... This is from the 2008 series, and this is the variant for number seven. Um, I, I knew nothing. Like, this was the first time I had ever seen this cover. This is the uh, Jim Valentino variant. Uh, I found this for a dollar, and it's it's probably in VF minus condition. It's not in the greatest. It's definitely not near mint. But I found it for a dollar. I know near mint copies of this can go for 30, for about 20 to 30. So I yeah, found it for a dollar. Very good. Uh, ba, ba, ba. And it's, I really dig the cover too. It's a really cool cover. Jim Valentino, not necessarily one of my favorite artists, but I dig this cover. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Invincible Iron Man, number 33. Uh, this is the Tron variant. Found this for a dollar. Um, I don't know what I want to say about this. I don't know, not too much. Uh, it can go for 20, but I don't know. A lot of these Tron variants are getting tougher to find. So, yeah, found that. Uh, another book I found for a dollar. I don't know, for some reason, this book doesn't go for as much as it should. Online, you might find it for cover price or less. Uh, Immortal Iron Fist number 27. This is probably one of the best iron fist covers and this book doesn't go for anything so i found it for either a dollar or for 50 cents i forget but it's a really really awesome cover and you can find it really cheap found this for 10 bucks found my third copy of deadpool number 65 first appearance of outlaw uh the what is it who does the art on this alvin alvin lee cover yeah but really cool uh i guess you could say playboy bunny cover so yeah. it's a pretty tough to find book i forgot how much this book goes for maybe 30 or something like that and we're winding down with uh space ghost number one for some reason for the past 10 years this book has eluded me uh ever since when it first came out back in 2005 i think late 2004 early 2005 i i've been wanting this book and when it came out, it was really, really hard to find. It was like around a 10 to $20 book at the time. And for some reason, I just wanted it. And I found it for, or I want to say three bucks. So I basically found it for cover price. So eh, eh, I figured I'd pick it up. And last but not least, I found Shaolin Cowboy number one. I don't know if this is a variant or not, or just like an alternate cover to number one. I uh, found number two. Found number three. Found found every single one of these for a dollar. Uh, number four, number five, and number six. Found these for a buck. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, here's all the books that I have, and I get to s basically start fresh. Now, I have no clue when I'm going to be doing another haul. Uh, I have to do some. I have to do some things that aren't comic book related that involve some money so uh, i have no clue when i'll uh be able to do another haul so no uh, i don't know mm -mm. might be a minute but hope hopefully it won't take too mu too much long it won't take long so yeah oh boy Ugh. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> But that's my haul, and I'm sticking to it, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.